You're probably familiar with Dr. Disrespect, who at this point is one of the most recognizable faces in professional gaming. Known for his over-the-top, braggadocious nature, one of Dr. Disrespect's biggest claims to fame is, of course... Winner! 1993-1994 Blockbuster Video Game Champion in the online gaming community! You're looking at the true international video gaming superstar! And because the character is so over the top, you might be surprised to hear that the Blockbuster World Video Game Championships were actually a real thing. It was a massive event held two years in a row that I actually had the chance to participate in. So what were the rules of this event, what games were played, and who actually won? Find out in this episode of Tales from the Internet. This episode of Tales from the Internet is brought to you by Dashlane. Do you remember when I made that GeoCities website? Do you think I remember the password to that thing? Come on. I've wasted probably years of my life in password recovery processes. But now I use Dashlane, which remembers my passwords for me and generates much more secure ones than my old favorite, Hunter 2. Dashlane also autofills your passwords and log information so you don't even have to type it. This feature is great because not only is it safer, it's also a much faster way to use the internet. Sign up at dashlane.com slash wang to get a 30 day free trial on Dashlane Premium, and use code WANG for 10% off if you want to upgrade for a safer, easier way to use the internet. And nobody's gonna get in my way today! You got it? Living in a world where professional gaming is a billion dollar industry and events can fill arenas and there's professional gamers who are legitimately mainstream stars, it's crazy to think that there was once a time that professional game was thought to be so absurd that it was actually a punchline in Far Side comics. It was something that I hadn't even considered until 1992 when I first came across an advertisement by Comerica advertising Quattro Adventure. The ad focused on the recommendation of this guy, Thor Ackerland, the Nintendo World Champion. I like all four games on Quattro Adventure, but my favorite is Super Robin Hood. Getting through the sheriff's evil castle is challenging and fun, but saving Maid Mary made it all worthwhile. Getting four adventure games on one cartridge is terrific. Every month, in every magazine, except for Nintendo Power because Comerica games were unlicensed and Nintendo wasn't happy about that, but that's a whole other tale. I continued to see Thor's face promoting Comerica products, and I began to become consumed with this weird mix of jealousy and admiration. I was a great gamer. Why couldn't I be the one giving my opinion about Quattro Adventure? What did Thor Ackerland have that I didn't? I hated him, yet I wanted to be him. But unfortunately, there would not be another Nintendo World Championship. At least not until 2015. Those dreams of gaming glory were fading just as quickly as they had arrived. It wasn't until the summer of 1994 when Blockbuster Video began promoting the first World Video Game Championships that my opportunity arrived. Finally, this was the chance to follow in the footsteps of my hero, Thor Ackerland. I immediately walked over to my local Blockbuster and signed up where I got the rules booklet. Here's how it worked. For three weeks, Blockbuster stores around the country would have people compete to crown two store champions. One for Sega Genesis, and one for Super Nintendo. Week 1 was NBA Jam for both consoles. Week 2 was Sonic the Hedgehog 3 for Genesis, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters for Super NES. Week 3 was Virtual Racing for Genesis, and for Super NES, a special Blockbuster exclusive title, Clay Fighter Tournament Edition. The player for each console with the highest cumulative score across those three weeks would be crowned the store champion. The store champions would then be flown to the Fort Lauderdale Convention Center where they would compete against all of the other store champions. I did Super Nintendo. First week, killed it on NBA Jam. Second week, killed it on Ninja Turtles. Third week. Week 3 comes around and... I did not become the store champion. I can blame it on the subtle differences between regular Clay Fighter and Tournament Edition, but really, I just joked. What a disgrace. I let you down, Thor Ackerland. The Blockbuster World Video Game Championships commenced in Fort Lauderdale, Florida without me. The tournament itself was a centerpiece of what would be a much larger gaming convention. 
All of the store champions went head to head, and when the dust settled, Fred Doughty became the Genesis champion, and Mark Janine became the Super NES champion, winning an intense game of NBA Jam by only two points. I specifically remember reading about Mark's victory in GamePro, his name being burned into my memory because of a friend who pronounced his name Janani. And I thought Janani sounded pretty funny, so I just haven't forgotten that. And lucky for me, I would only have to wait another year for my chance to once again try to join Thor Ackerland and Mark Janane on top of the Mount Olympus of guys who are really good at video games. You've been practicing, now it's time. The Blockbuster World Video Game Championship is back as players all over the world square off in a do-or-die video game competition. Play! Sponsored by Nintendo, Acclaim, GamePro, and Fleer. Play! So get down to Blockbuster. Sign up now. Eat, sleep, play, play, play. <laughs> What else is there? This year, the rules were a little bit different. Rather than play different games each week, you'd play the same game each week. On the Genesis side, they had an exclusive cartridge that contained a version of Judge Dredd and a version of NBA Jam Tournament Edition. On the Super NES side, you had a modified version of Donkey Kong Country. Both of these cartridges are actually extremely rare, and if you can get your hands on them, they're worth thousands of dollars. Once again, I went with Super Nintendo, and I'm... Still a little salty about what happened here. You see, week one comes and goes, and I crushed everybody. And the reason why I crushed everybody that week was that I was the only one who seemed to know about the fact that you could smack the floor and make bananas appear in certain spots. But the other kids saw the banana smack, so week two comes around, they're all smacking the floor too and closing the gap. And then week three comes around, and well, I think you know how this story goes. I, I wish I had a video of the fucking tantrum I threw in that Blockbuster video that day. Whole... But it was an important life lesson, because that was the day I learned that you never show your hand until you absolutely have to. So the Blockbuster World Video Game Championships once again go on without me, this time in San Diego, California. And this time the finals were a little bit different too, because they didn't use the same games. This year the game selection included things like NBA Live 95, Kirby's Avalanche, Zoop, and the finals were decided with Batman Forever. I don't know if you've played Batman Forever, but it's really, really bad. <laughs> and when this one came to an end, Ricky Frazier became the Genesis Champion and Leon Kane became the Super NES Champion. And you probably noticed that among all these names of champions that I listed, I didn't say Dr. Disrespect, I didn't say Guy Beam, and that probably doesn't actually surprise you. I, I, I don't know, maybe some of you are really shocked to hear that Dr. Disrespect wasn't actually the 1993-1994 Blockbuster World Video Game Champion. In fact, there was no 1993 championship. I mean, considering that he would have been around 12 years old at the time, in an area that undoubtedly had a lot of Blockbusters, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually competed in them and lost and maybe some of that childhood longing for that glory inspired him to weave it into the character. But ultimately, it's just an over-the-top, goofy character that he's playing in hell. Even lying about that kind of thing kind of serves the character, right? It's nothing to really get mad over. Except, some people get really mad about this. Dr. Disrespect lied about being the 93-94 Blockbuster Games champion. Or at least, this is the conclusion I have come to personally. I challenge Reddit to find any proof or evidence that Guy Beam, aka Dr. Disrespect, is indeed the two-time, back-to-back, 1993-1994 Blockbuster Games World Champion. I have come up empty-handed every time. This is something I have always suspected, but all I ever got was shit from people for asking for any sort of proof. In light of recent events, I feel like this needs some recognition. If anyone can prove he really was the two-time, I will gladly accept that conclusion. But as of now, I believe he is not only a cheater, but also a layer who is deceiving his fans. It's supposed to be a gag. Coming out against him like this is like declaring wrestling is fake. We know. But with such controversy around the Doc's win, what actually did happen to the Blockbuster World video game champions? Most of them appear to have kept a very low profile since their wins. Except for one, and that's where this gets a little spicy. 
allow me to reintroduce you to the 1994 Super Nintendo champion, Mark Janine. My friend Brandon, he told, he said there was no way I was even going to make it to, to Fort Lauderdale, and I made like a $10 bet with him, so I guess he's going to have to pay me back. No longer a soft-spoken child, Mark now goes by the name Angry Gamer. With an avatar that features that classic Game Pro Magazine Francis Mao art style, Mark is extremely proud of his reign as the blockbuster world video game champion 1994, as is evidenced by his Instagram tag, Blockbuster Champ. Mark also speaks of his accomplishments on his Twitch bio. I entered the first Blockbuster Video Game Championship in 1994 when I was 14. It was the single largest video game tournament of the 20th century. Even to this day, tournaments don't come close. Over half a million players from around the world competed. It required complete mastery of a dozen games in a time when online console gaming was a pipe dream. After months of practice, I made it to the Nationals in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and managed to secure the title of World Champion SNES. As part of my winnings, I was given a tour of GamePro Magazine, the premier video game publication at the time. My avatar is actually a caricature that was drawn of me when I was honorary editor for a day. Over the next few years, I entered several other tournaments including Sega's Rock the Rock, which was televised on MTV coming in second place, Nintendo's Power Fest, and the Funko Land Championship. After earning my first college degree, I wrote a science fiction novel entitled Horizon's Edge, which is available on Amazon. I am currently engaged to a beautiful Russian woman. Our wedding is planned for autumn. Aside from day trading and screenplay writing, I spend the remainder of my time thinking of ways to improve my channel and getting my cannabis business off the ground. And overall, he seems like a pretty chill dude. But there is one tweet that made him not so chill. It was a posting by Dr. Disrespect on May 21st of 2016 that sent Mark and the Doc on a collision course. Someone stole my 1993 Blockbuster Video Game Championship trophy, and I'm heated. Mark didn't take notice of this tweet until a year later in July, and he was pissed. Bullshit! You commented on a tweet that is over a year ago? Yeah, I just found out about this idiot. His whole character is fake, so the fact he's saying he's the champion, everyone already knows it's just part of his character. He's getting paid, and a lot of people actually believe him. That's called acting. Actually, it's called fraud. Two-time winner. Lol. You didn't win shit. Show me your trophy and I'll show you mine. Now, to a lot of outside observers, Mark probably just seems bitter and unreasonable. I mean, why get this mad at a guy who's just playing a character? But at the same time, try putting yourself in Mark's shoes. In 1994, something to the tune of half a million children competed in these blockbuster world video game championships. They're all hoping and dreaming to accomplish the thing that you actually did accomplish. A once-in-a-lifetime achievement. Something that can never be taken from you, or so you think. Life goes on, you grow up, and the more adult responsibilities you have to take on, the more gaming fades in the background, but hey, you still always have that championship to your name, right? And then one day you learn that one of the most famous, one of the most profitable professional gamers in the world is claiming to do the thing that you actually did. Even as a joke, even as a gag, that's gotta sting a little. As I see it, there's one way to rectify this situation. I'm talking... Dr. Disrespect, Guy Beam, versus Mark Janine, the Angry Gamer, one-on-one, -on -one, head to head, in a game of NBA Jam. Hashtag Doc vs. Mark, make a trend worldwide. And if you like this video, you'll probably like my Mortal Kombat videos. I'm out of here.